How you doing, divers? Alec Pierce, we're back. Kevin and I are back here with our uh, scuba tech tips. Today, I want to talk about a very, very topical topic. A topical topic. How about that, Kev? And, uh, and that is, we're going to talk very briefly about enriched air. Now, as it turns out, enriched air has only been around for a short period of time. Now, let me clarify. Enriched air has been around for a very long time. When I did a commercial diving program in the 70s, um, uh, with a very good friend of mine, by the way, Jim Cosmic, well-known diver and underwater photographer, a long time ago, uh, we had different mixes. They were called mixes. We didn't call it enriched air nitrox. It was called a mix. But generally speaking, those mixes involved uh, increasing the oxygen level in, in the air that we were using. Sometimes we used other gases as well. You probably know about some of those gases that commercial divers use. So the, the concept of using enriched air is not new. But the idea of recreational divers, eh, fun divers, I like to call them. Eh, we're doing it for fun. The idea of fun divers going out there and using enriched air is relatively new, maybe 20 years bit more than that. Well, maybe it had been around before that, but it's only become a big deal in the last 20, 25 years. And it has become a big deal. In fact, when uh, Patty came out with their enriched uh, air course, or E-A-N, enriched air nitrox, that's what E-A-N means, in case you were wondering, enriched air nitrox, which is commonly referred to as nitrox, um, in a very short period of time. The Enriched Air, here's the, here's the book for it, the Enriched Air Diver Manual from Patty, and this course from Patty became their most popular specialty course. Yeah, it, it all, now part of that's marketing, you know, part of it was a dive store owner, owner trying to make a buck and saying to the divers, you should take the Enriched Air course and uh, learn about Enriched Air, and that's fine, he, he, he wasn't doing anything wrong. Uh, that was smart. It's always smart to learn more about diving. And if it happens that you dive a great deal, if you're maybe a step beyond fun diving <laughs> and you want to learn more, well, the University of course is a great place to start. Uh, it, it's a quick, easy, it's a one evening program one evening. There's no open water dives involved with an enriched air course because um, you can't have a, you can't tell if you're breathing ordinary breathing air or enriched air. You can't tell. You can't, ooh, that's enriched air. You can't tell. So the point of having an, an open water dive is no point to it at all. But anyway, what I wanted to share with you today, very simply, is a question that comes up pretty regularly. And that is, somebody has asked, what is oxygen compatible? And uh, oxygen compatible is a term that you learn in the Aristia course. Uh, it commonly referred to as uh, OCA, oxygen compatible air. Uh, meaning that the breathing mixture that you're using, commonly called nitrox, <clears throat> is also sometimes referred to as oxygen compatible or oxygen, oxygen compatible air. And, and so people will ask you, what exactly is oxygen? oxygen compatible. How can I be sure whether I'm using a nitrox tank or not a nitrox tank that I'm getting the right air, OCA? So uh, let me take a minute with you and just quickly I'll refresh and, and tell you that <clears throat> when you decide to start diving with enriched air, nitrox, several things change. One of the first things that changes is your regulator because <clears throat> The important thing to come back to oxygen compatible is that everything that that enriched air touches has to be safe in the enriched air environment. Oxygen itself is a very interesting gas, and that's what we're concerned with, hence the term oxygen compatible. The regulator, the tools that you use, your regulator, uh, your tank, of course, has to be oxygen cleaned. It has to be compatible with the gas you're using in it. Now, if you're using ordinary air, if you're not going to be using enriched air, you're not going to be using nitrox, doesn't matter. Take the tank from the manufacturer, of course, have it cleaned and inspected annually. Put your uh, air into a breathing air, go diving, have fun. But if you are going to be using enriched air, going to be using nitrox, that tank has to change. It has to be cleaned. You have to take it to the dive store and they have to clean it and make sure that it's safe for oxygen enriched air. Higher levels of oxygen. Anything in the tank that could react with that higher level of oxygen can create a problem. So it has to be especially clean for that purpose. 
and the materials the tank is made from, and the materials the regulator is made from. They all have to be oxygen compatible too. So the O-rings and the seals in, in the tank itself and in the regulator, regulator has to be cleaned, regulators have lubrication on them. The tank does not have lubrication inside, a bit on the valve stem, but not inside, on the valve threads, but not inside. But the regulator does for the various parts to move smoothly. They have lubrication. Well, at one time it wasn't a big deal. We used to use the... Uh, <laughs> Crisco, Vaseline, whatever we had handy. <laughs> Generally speaking, as the products improved, we settled on silicone, silicone grease. And it's still silicone lubricant or silicone grease <clears throat> for all water sports equipment. Now, it should say for all water sports equipment except oxygen uh, 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 enriched air. Should say that, but it doesn't. So that became <clears throat> the standard for lubricants in scuba for many, many years. No, oh, probably the last 50 years. No. Not for enriched air. <clears throat> Not good for enriched air. So the O-rings, the lubricants have to be regulated. It actually has to be completely disassembled. Completely clean. So there are no, there's no residual oil or grease or other particles on the regulator. And then it has to be rebuilt completely using proper grease. And there are several trade names. A common name is Trilube, Crystal Lube. There are several different trade names out there. But basically it's a lubricant that is oxygen compatible. Now that is the only lubricant that is used in the regulator. It's the only lubricant used on the tank valve, on the threads. Also the material, the O-rings. Here, here's an example of a good old-fashioned neoprene, black neoprene. It's even got a feather on there, Kevin. This is obviously used. You can see that little feather on there uh, from, has been under pressure. But that's a good standard neoprene uh, O-ring. Rubber. Rubber O-ring. Works great. Has been working that way for many, many, many years, and, and I suspect that that the, the vast majority of scuba tanks in the world today still use a good old black neoprene O-ring in it. Yep, that's what it is. But not anymore. Not if you're using nitrox. If you're using nitrox, you have to have a oxygen compatible O-ring, an O-ring that will not deteriorate as rubber will. Neoprene, neoprene, rubber are pretty much interchangeable. So if it's a rubber O-ring, eventually it will begin to interact with the oxygen and break down. Not good. So you need to use a special O-ring. Looks exactly the same, doesn't it? No, they've changed the color. It is a different material entirely. It's, uh, again, a trade name. Viton is a common name. V-I-T-O-N. That's a common name that's used to describe this. Um, and there's other uh, more technical terms, but Viton is the most common name. And, and it looks exactly the same. Well, it is. It's the same size. It has to go in the same tank, same valve. But the material is different. And it is characterized by a different color. In this particular case, it's a uh, chocolate brown. Uh, <laughs> nice color. There are slightly, there are different colors, but the point is that it's different from the black neoprene. So you can easily tell the difference. There are other ways to tell the difference if you're, uh, if you're technically inclined. But uh, for most people, for most divers, the only way to tell it quickly and easily is by the color brown. Now, there are some newer O-rings on the market as well. I have here a silicone O-ring, yeah. A silicone, again, is different from, uh, from Viton even, and it has to have a different color. So it's, it's not, it's, it's not uh, mixed up. It's easy to distinguish. Silicone O-rings like this white one, again, uh, sometimes are crystal clear, clear uh, or white, and they're different as well. So that's one of the, and every O-ring in your regulator, top of my head, I would say there's probably in the, a minimum of five O-rings, and some regulators it could be 20 O-rings in your regulator. If you include the uh, computer and the SPG and all those things, there are 25 or 30 O-rings, the smallest being almost, almost impossible to see, a tiny, tiny black speck, speck and, and up, up to, in some cases, up to three or four inches in diameter. There might be a dozen O-rings. They all have to be oxygen compatible, plus the uh, O-ring in the tank. You, what you want, you want to get, you want to see this sticker on the tank. This is a sticker. It's a tape that's used to, when the tank is filled, and this indicates that this particular tank has nitrox in it. And there's even room down there for the dive store operator, the fill operator, to write down there some information about what you can or cannot do. Because depending on <clears throat> the different level of oxygen and rich air that you have, you may or may not have a different, well, you will have a different maximum operating depth. And they can actually write that in if they want to. And this is a visual sticker. Even the visual, your annual visual changes too. There's a typical visual sticker. In this particular case, this visual uh, uh, sticker is from 
dive coerthers up in Lindsay. That's where we are today, up at one of our favorite dive stores. And one of the, I think it's the only dive store in the coerthers. If you're up here in this area, cottage country, then drop in and see Chris. Great little dive store, dive coerthers. And you see here that there's an air service only where they can punch that out. And that indicates this tank is a great tank. It's clean, ready to go, air only, meaning <sighs> this stuff. Yeah, yeah. But if you are using this tank for nitrox, besides the nitrox specific, specific sticker for your visual, it'll indicate over here that this is uh, uh, up to 100% oxygen. 100%. Well, there are times, you see, and if, you, if you've been reading the manual and you know a bit about nitrox, I know a lot of you guys do, there are times when the, the, your scuba tank would have 100% oxygen. Now, we don't die with 100% oxygen, but it, depending on the fill system, 100% oxygen, pure breathing oxygen, which by the way is different than the oxygen you guys are using for your oxyacetylene torch. It's a metal, medical grade oxygen. 100% pure oxygen could be going into your tank, depending on the method they use to fill it. If you want a 32 mix, it's called 32, which means 32%. Instead of 20%, it's 32%. If you want that mix, some dive stores are able to provide you with 32 mix, and they put 32 in. But some dive stores, a lot of dive stores use a different method called partial pressure, where they actually put 100% oxygen into your tank, and then to a certain pressure, and then what they do is they complete the fill of the tank with oxygen compatible air. And in the end, when the two gases are mixed, you now have your 32. But the point is that there's 100% oxygen going in. So anything, obviously, in that system has to be compatible with oxygen, 100% oxygen. And then you use your tester, as you've got handy, and make sure that uh, the level is exactly right. So everything, everything, that, all, anything that these touch, they all have to be clean to make sure it's oxygen compatible. Now, I mentioned oxygen compatible air. And this is a small point, and I'll wrap up with this. This is important. <clears throat> if you're going diving, or you're a fun diver, you're going diving, you know, 30 feet and taking some pictures or exploring a wreck with your camera or whatever, and you're just using ordinary air, go crazy. Have a good time. Go to the dive store, get her filled up, pay, pay the dive store your, your 10 bucks, whatever it is, and go diving, have a great time. It's a wonderful sport. You'll enjoy yourself. If by some chance, and a lot of divers do, you decide you want to try enriched air. You want to try nitrox diving for whatever reason. And there are lots of reasons why you might want to. Then your tank will be clean. Your regular, everything is all set for, for nitrox diving. Your buddy calls you up and says, hey, I want to go up to Fenland Falls and check out the train wreck in Fenland Falls. Okay, well, I don't need nitrox for that. I'll go get an air fill. So now you run to your local dive store and you say, hey, I'm going up to Fenland Falls. Can you fill my tank? And the dive store owner says, yeah, Alec, yeah, you'll love it up there. I've been there a hundred times. It's cold, it's dark, and the train is pretty neat. You'll love it. And he fills my tank and off I go. If he did not use oxygen compatible air to fill my tank, if he used just the ordinary breathing air, clean, filtered, pure breathing air that he gives to every diver, instead of oxygen compatible air, that tank can no longer be used for oxygen, no longer used for nitrox. Because normal breathing air that scuba divers use is not necessarily pure enough to be used for nitrox. And this is the question that the uh, young man asked uh, from my videos. Thank you very much for your comments. He asked, <clears throat> if I use my nitrox diving for regular air diving, do I need to get it cleaned afterwards? The answer is maybe. <laughs> the answer is maybe. If the ordinary air that you put into your tank at the dive store is in fact ordinary scuba breathing air, not oxygen compatible air, yes, technically you need to get your tank cleaned because it's no longer oxygen clean. However, most dive stores, in fact all dive stores, are able to supply what's called OCA, oxygen compatible air. So you take your nitrox tank in, okay? You've got your nitrox visual. It was clean using Viton rings. You've got your nitrox tape on it. You've been using it for nitrox. So you take your nitrox tank into the dive store 
and you're going to Fenton Falls to make a fun dive with your buddy and you just want ordinary air. You don't need nitrox and you have no point in paying for nitrox because it is more expensive, naturally. You just need ordinary air. So you say to the dive store owner, I just need air. But please make sure it's oxygen compatible air. Ah, you see? Then he will then use his oxygen compatible air. The air that he uses when he's mixing the nitrox. The air that is safe to put into your tank and does not contaminate it. The air that you can use in the tank that day and not need to worry about getting it cleaned again. Oxygen compatible air. So if you do that, if you just go breathing with ordinary air using your nitrox tank, but the air that you get put into your nitrox tank is OCA, oxygen compatible, you're fine. And then a week later, you want to go diving, and it's a special dive, and you need nitrox, you can go back to the same dive store and say, okay, now I need 32%. Away you go. No worries, no problems. You can put nitrox into that tank. Because it has not been, I hate to use the word contaminated, <laughs> pure scuba diving breathing air is not bad, but it's not as pure as oxygen compatible air. Now, I hope that makes sense. As long as you're using OCA, oxygen compatible air, in your nitrox tank, you're safe. Shouldn't be any problems whatsoever. And all dive stores don't have oxygen compatible air. In fact, if you look at the dive store sticker on the wall, it'd be on every, every dive store has a sticker, certificate on the wall. Uh, it, it indicates that the air is oxygen compatible, safe to be used with enriched air. So you can actually check with the dive store owner, assuming, assuming he's a good guy, and all dive store owners are good guys. Anyway, he, he should be able to tell you that it is. Okay, so I hope that answers the question. The answer to your question is yes, you can use ordinary air in your nitrox tank, ordinary breathing air, provided that ordinary breathing air is particularly pure, meaning it's OCA. All right, I hope that answers your question. And if you have a few more thoughts about uh, nitrox diving, it's a lot of fun. It can open up a whole new world for you. And, uh, and it's interesting as well. Technically, it's interesting. So think about talking to your dive store about taking that enriched air course and become a nitrox diver. <laughs> a devil gas. What's we used to, years, years ago, we used to call devil gas divers. <laughs> a lot of fun, though. Anyway, I hope that answers your question. And we'll see you again real soon. Alec Pierce. Scuba Tech Tips here from Dive Kawartha in Lindsay, Ontario. Talk to you soon.